What are teenagers in Etobicoke doing? Well, we have two that are going to tell us a little bit about their work at the Etobicoke School of the Arts. And my first guest, just to prove that teenagers are very busy and doing wonderful things, is Lorraine Lawson, who is a student at the Etobicoke School of the Arts and very much involved in music, drama, and the arts in general. Welcome, Lorraine. Thank you. And uh, we were chatting before the show, talking a little bit about your aspirations. But before we see where you're heading, let's see what you've been doing. If you were applying for a job right now, if it was to do with green eyes, beautiful green eyes, you'd get it. But that isn't enough. So tell me some of the things that you're doing at the Etobicoke School of the Arts. Um, at the school for the past four years, I've been involved with the Choral Ensemble, which is a group of the best 25, 27 um, kids um, from all areas in the school, visual arts, dance, drama, music, or music theater. Um, we're the best actors, singers, dancers in the school by audition. And throughout the year, we do performances around Toronto, conferences, that kind of thing. Um, last year, we went to Calgary's Winter Olympics and performed there. We were chosen. Um, so it gives an opportunity to perform, and every year, you re-audition. And for the past three years, I've been dance captain with that group. And uh, so I've had a chance to choreograph and work on my leadership skills and things through that especially. And also, I freelance um, as a choreographer around Etobicoke. And I've worked um, at some high schools in the area. St. Basil College was one that I just did. And Havergal uh, College as well. Doing the choreography for different for, productions? Yes, for their shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you, were you involved in the Sears Festival this year, I understand? That's right. That's Tell us right. a little bit about that. Well, uh, there was a class offered at the school, uh, a drama minor class for non-drama majors. And there were six people in the class, all from different areas of the school, and no one was from drama. And so the teacher of the class thought it would be wonderful if we could bring the arts together and make sort of a dance drama to original music. This teacher was John Glossop. That's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, with that, we workshopped it and just it turned into a fabulous piece, a 50-minute piece dance drama that uh, we decided to enter into the Sears Drama Festival. What was it called? It was called Nehuai, and uh, in English translation, it's wasted, just the term of destruction or being thrown away. And so what was the play about, in fact? The play was based on Vietnam um, and the story of Vietnam. But we decided, since it is a very overdone topic with movies and so on, um, we thought that we could shed a little different light on it. So it's um, uh, four different points of view. Viet Cong, a uh, warrior, a Vietnamese prostitute, um, a Buddhist monk, and his um, influences on what's happening and just his um, feelings about that, which I think is something that was never discussed. And also an American GI's point of view as well. So you brought some black and white glossies here, which we'd mm -hmm. like to talk about. Tell me about this first picture, please. Um, this is after, this is the Viet Cong uh, warrior, and this is her sister that she's holding, and uh, she was shot. This is after a troop of American GIs have interrogated the village, and in the process, her sister was shot and murdered. And I noticed this, there's a big garbage can on the set and something on the wall. What does that signify? That wall is this... Um, was sort of just a, our set was very simple and we wanted to keep it simple and so it was just one wall and with each death or um, murder in the play uh, the people would slash this with blood and by the end we had a symbol of Nei Hawaii, the uh, actually it's the Chinese symbol the Vietnamese we realized with some research use just uh, Roman letters and mm -hmm. uh, no caricatures but we use the Chinese symbol for that. Let's have a look at the next picture. You were talking about prostitutes. It looks to me like these young ladies might be women That's right. of uh, that profession. That's right. This is in a bar in Saigon. It was taken. Uh, we decided to do a scene from there. She's almost like our comic relief character, the prostitute. And just how, out of all of this uh, war and destruction on many sides, how it's benefited someone. And <laughs> It's her benefit of the war, but, uh, and her hopes, her whole character, it's her hopes to go to America, and just the um, whole um, naive sense that America is this fabulous, wonderful place, mm -hmm. and that she wants to go there so badly, and one line that she says is, you know, just no one can understand what, you know, America's really like, like I really know, but I'm sure she would change her mind when she was there. <laughs> 
And here we seem to have the Buddhist monk, am I right? That's the Buddhist monk leading a Tai Chi class. So you even learn to do that as well? Yes. How do you like Tai Chi? What does it do for you? Um, I've been to China and the, um, Asia. I was there two years ago, um, Hong Kong and Japan and China. How did you happen to be there? Um, my father's in the travel business, so I was very lucky and he took me along. Um, and he does quite a, a lot of business to China. Um, tai Chi is for the Asians. Um, they're obviously a sense of exercise, but also just a spiritual um, release. Um, a time where they can concentrate and bring themselves and their soul, you know, together. Like and a discipline? It is a very disciplinary uh, form, an art form in many ways. And it's amazing because early in the morning you can get up and you look down in the square or a park or wherever and people just walk from all over and somehow they get in the most organized fashion in absolute lines. No one is instructing them to get into these lines. That's sensitivity to each other, oh, complete, isn't it? The, complete sensitivity. Like a sequential movement where everybody falls into That's place right. just from that. And it took us uh, many rehearsals to try and capture that, and that was even impossible. I don't think it's something that's in their culture that I don't think we'll ever be able to capture 100%, but we tried our best. And the last one, I see some warfare here. Yes. That uh, was a... Actually, that was our probably our most sophisticated scene and one that worked uh, the best. It was our, um, it was a river scene. And as I said, our set was very limited and we wanted to keep it simple. So um, in order to make, create the motion of the river, we used obviously sound effects and the music uh, was very helpful in creating the mood and the setting. But we've used camouflage netting and the dancers, as I said, it was a dance drama. So the dancers are part of the set and they are holding this mesh and they move and they create the motion and the sounds, of landscape. Sounds quite um, esoteric and rather um, artistic in that sense. John Glossop was the director. Yes. Yes, he's a very talented person. He directs a lot of productions and I've seen many of them and have always been very impressed. But something else really quite marvelous has happened to you very recently. You were auditioned for the American Academy of uh, musical and dramatic arts. Okay. How did that come about and what was the result? Um, our school, obviously, because people are interested in the arts, um, makes it known to us of the uh, different things that we can do afterwards. Uh, universities or colleges or programs that offer all academic as well as the arts if we would like to pursue them. And so it was up on the bulletin board, this place, and uh, I decided to audition. What was it exactly? Audition for the American... Audition for the uh, school. And uh, the school offers two programs. There's an integrated program, music theater, and an acting program. Um, the acting, it's, it's known for more. It's uh, been established for about 25 years. And the school is located directly on Broadway in Manhattan, New York. And Bright lights. It's a fabulous experience, and I'm really looking forward to it. I was accepted, mm -hmm. and uh, I think it will be a learning experience either way. I mean, New York itself, I'm sure, is going to be a learning experience just on its own. Congratulations. Thank you know you have to have a lot of money to be in New York. You know that now, don't you? Yes. So you better start saving. Okay. Do, you, uh, do you know now you have been accepted into that That's school? Right. That means you are definitely going to be going. Do you have you any idea where you're going to live? or? They have residences Residence. there. So that's a good, yeah. safe place for you to be. Yes. What did you have to do for your audition, Lorraine? Um, as I said, the audition was held in Toronto, which was nice. And only in the past two years has the school um, opened itself to foreign students. So I was very lucky because two years ago I wouldn't have had probably the opportunity. Um, I had to do a monologue. A what did you choose piece. to do? It was a piece from I'm Getting My Act Together and Taking It on the Road. How long is the monologue? It's about a two and a half, three minute piece. Do you remember it? Not 100%. <laughs> <laughs> you put me on the spot what's with the that. What's the first line? Um, Just say it the way you said it. She draws a complete blank now. A complete blank. <laughs> it's a funny piece because it goes, it's, she's talking to her lawyer about her husband who she wants to divorce and all the problems. And then she goes into playing this kid because she talks to her husband like a, just a little child, you know, in order to mm -hmm. survive in the marriage. But uh, Besides the monologue, what else then? Then you had to perform uh, um, a piece, a uh, singing piece. What did you say? Either a ballad or a tempo. 
um, I sang I Don't Want to Know from Dear World. It's a musical called Dear World. Uh -huh. It's a fabulous, actually, audition piece because very few people know the musical or know the song, so it always helps in we really, we really should have had you performing, doing your audition for us. <laughs> and what else? That was the monologue? And then an singing. interview. Then an interview. And what did that. you tell them about yourself? How wonderful you were? And... Well, you try and do your best and let them know just everything that, um, that you do. Last summer I worked um, for a company, actually John Glossop was the director of that too, it was a music theater um, company. And in that we also had a chance to teach, an assistant teach, um, the arts to mentally handicapped people, so from ages 8 to about 66 years of age, and non-handicapped people in an integrated program. And so I told them about that and my interest that, um, you know, I would like to use my abilities in the arts and my talents and that to better other people and at the same time bettering myself. Well, what about your education? What's going to happen there, your, your formal education? Um, well, I've already graduated from high school, a grade 12 diploma. Um, and from that, I'm just going to go to AMDA. AMDA is a strictly art school. But after, AMDA has a program um, in which after the two-year program, if you do want to get a, a degree, you can go to various universities that they have a reputation at, mm -hmm. which are 10 or 11. Um, and I'm sure I could do that in Canada too, go to a Canadian university. Um, to pursue a de uh, degree then after that. So you could jump into third or whatever year. How did your play Wasted do in the Sears Drama Festival, which is the big festival for That's right. Uh, we were really high fortunate. Schools. We uh, were one of the plays chosen across Toronto uh, to perform in a uh, competition around Toronto. So for the best uh, drama piece around Toronto. And we won that. And we went on then to. Um, just participate in the regional Ontario Sears Drama Festival mm -hmm. um, where there were plays chosen from all regions of the province um, and performed at Hart House Theatre. Wow. And uh, yeah, there were four evenings of pieces all across Ontario, so it was fabulous and we got to do that. You were talking about Canadian universities in Canada. How do you feel, you're going to the United States, how do you feel about, let's say you really make it big, are you going to come back to Canada and do your stuff here? I will always be a Canadian and I will always promote Canada in that way and wherever um, this business takes me then that's where I'm going to go but definitely I will continue to work in Canada and I've already um, planned on once I school starts at AMDA um, in October but I've already planned to return to Toronto and work in summer stock theatres um, in Canada during the summer have you done any professional work yet? Have you done any uh, theater? Art form last summer was professional that we were paid for. And all my um, choreography jobs are professional. Some are volunteer, but I've been, um, you know, as a professional choreographer, amateur professional, because just beginning, but uh, so little hints here and there of that. So the Etobicoke School of the Arts has a very uh, good program, artistically, of course, and in drama, music, and I suppose in the visual arts. How about the academic uh, part of the Etobicoke School of the Arts? Very major part of the school, and I mm -hmm. think that's something that a lot of people uh, have misconceptions about. They're not quite sure what we're doing over there, you know? <laughs> your, your, principal and te your principal and teachers will be very glad to hear you say that, yeah. because I understand that the standards are high. Ms. Main really pr uh, continues to promote the academics, and uh, every term has sort of an announcement every uh, term just to keep working on those academics. Um, it's not even a half and half split. We usually have two to three classes in the arts and the rest in academic subjects. So, and I, I think that that integration uh, really works well. I think being involved in a school where uh, you are enjoying something on an arts level that you're interested in just bounces and uh, has a snowball effect onto the academics. You're far more outgoing and uh, far more well-spoken and so on to do, you know, the independent studies and that kind of thing that's in the academics. So I think that it's a really great combination. Who is your idol? Who do you think As is the performer? greatest? Mm -hmm. Wow, there's so many. I you would say many. Barbara Streisand, Bette Midler, and Angela Lansbury. And why those three in particular, I would say, are because they are all... Uh, people who have not limited themselves in just one thing. I mean, they are 
all three women who mm -hmm. can perform absolutely anything you put on their plate. They're you know? so versatile. You're Completely. so right. Well, Lorraine Lawson, I wish that you make it really big, have a wonderful beginning at uh, the American School of Musical and Dramatic Arts, have every success, come back to Canada and have a big, be a big star, and I certainly will come and see you if you're performing anywhere if I see your name in lights. Thanks a lot Thank for coming. You. So you see, that's what teenagers are doing in Etobicoke today. They're going on to great fields, and we'll be back in a moment with another gentleman who is involved with guitar music and who was part of the same theater that uh, Lorraine was in. So come right back. classical arrangement of Eleanor Rigby that you just heard performed was by Ben Glossop from the Etobicoke School of the Arts and uh, I really enjoyed that concert. Thanks. We'll just put the guitar down here for a minute and then we'll keep playing because in a few minutes because uh, that's a very enjoyable way to start the second half of my show. Leaders of Tomorrow and I'm Sonia Dunn. I've just spoken with uh, um, Lorraine Lawson from your school and you were involved with Lorraine in the theater piece that went to the Sears Festival and came first in Toronto. What was your part in that, Ben? Well, it, it started out as an, a group of people who were all not drama majors, and we each had certain things, like we had art majors, mm -hmm. and their jobs were to work on the artistic things in the play, and we had dance majors, and they were going to... Um, incorporate dance into it because we want to incorporate all the majors and I was the only music major so in one way or another way back in September I was supposed to incorporate music into the show and um, so it started off just try trying to compile different um, like music that's already been written and stuff 
And then we decided to scrap that idea altogether once we had a better idea of, of the script being written. And so I just started writing music for different scenes. And after a while, I just, the more that we had written, I just wrote basically all the music for it. So you wrote the whole musical score for the play and pronounce it for me again? No, I which means wasted, right. and it was what yeah. uh, Lorraine was talking about, the, the um, Vietnam, waste in Vietnam and so on. So you did the musical arrangements, and that mm. went to the Sears Festival and came first in the Toronto, uh, the Toronto region. Right. What, you also received uh, two or three awards. Tell me about those. Yeah, I, I received three awards, and they were awards given by the adjudicator of the festival who sort of chooses who goes on and, and to, to the different levels and he gives he has the chance to give awards to things that he finds special in, in different plays like he could give them for technical merit or for uh, original script and things like that and um, and it was performed on three levels the Toronto level and then um, and then the district level and now the provincial level and in both the first two levels, the adjudicator um, awarded me for my original music. For the music and performance as well? Yeah. You played, uh, were you on stage? Well, no, we were, the first play that we did, we did it at our, at our school, and we have a, a musical pit. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have seven mus musicians, a flute, a cello, bass, uh, two keyboards, um, electric guitar, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And we also have four, four singers, and the singers are used more like, or, uh, like instruments rather than, um, rather than just... Their voices singers, are like yeah. instruments, so you're... Well, how... And, of course, you've been very successful at this. How long have you been playing the guitar? Uh, seven years now. And was this of your own choosing? Did you decide to do this yourself? Mm -hmm. Chose classical as your... Is classical your most favorite kind of music, or...? Uh, it's, it's hard to say what like my favorite kind of music is, but um, I started off with um, a teacher who's actually whose arrangement that was of Eleanor Rigby, um, and we sort of started off like not really in like any one vein. I started off with many classical technical things, and I would, we'd work on blues and we'd work on folk and and classical as well, and and so I've had a very sort of diverse background on playing the guitar like also I'm also very interested in playing jazz lately you're in grade 12 at mm -hmm. uh, the Etobicoke School of the Arts right. and uh, you have one more year to go and where are you heading which direction are you going into uh, you're going on to university I'm going on to university yeah but with what in mind um, well I'd, at the moment I'm I'm like to basically get my chops up for because um, I also play the bassoon and um, and there's a, a fairly good sort of market for bassoon players, I suppose you'd say. Um, so I'd like to become very adept at, at playing my instrument while keeping up composing and all the other aspects of music, which not too many people know about, like teaching and stuff. Would you like to play for something, let's say, like the Toronto Symphony Orchestra, or would you prefer yeah. to be a solo performer? Or how? Well, um, I, if, if, I, if I was like someone said, what would you like to be, and, and put me in that situation. I, th I think it would be very, it would be great to play in a symphony, because I, I, f I find much more satisfaction in, in playing in a, in a group than I do sort of just so, like soloing like I just did mm -hmm. there, even though people go, wow, that's really cool. But just to use your ears and sit in a group is very... Your uh, father is uh, very involved in the arts, too. He's a drama director and a teacher at the Etobicoke School of the Arts. What about the rest of your family? Is everybody involved? Well, my, my mother is sort of the one that got, got, got us started on music. Um, she played the piano when she was a kid. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and so she, I started on piano when I was seven or so. And then I uh, stopped playing that and started playing the guitar and the bassoon. I um, also have an 11-year-old sister who's very involved in, um, in the arts. She's a very like, great dancer and she's um, She's writing a book, which is like 60 pages long. She's 11 years old, by the way. She's really going to town, isn't she, <laughs> yeah. in the arts? Yeah. How about another number, please, uh, mm -hmm. Ben Glossop? Ben, of your own choice, so you can sing or dance okay. or whatever you wish. <laughs> Hit it. A little tuning, a little yeah, Chinese a little music here. Mm -hmm. Does the guitar? 
guitar go out of tune very readily? Uh, no, it's, it's actually a different tuning. For this, oh, this so you've retuned it. Okay. It, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Ben Glossop singing the title? Uh, for Emily, Wherever I Might Find Her by uh, Simon and Garfunkel. I see, and I haven't heard that one for a long, long yeah, time. Yeah. Do you like folk music uh, a I lot? Do. Do, your roots, obviously, you're too young to have gone the, through the 60s. The, yeah. the real stuff, but uh, the original stuff that we, when the resurgence in folk music was on, but uh, it's rubbed off on you somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Somewhere yeah. along the way. Let's put the guitar back. Well, Ben Glossop has been my guest. He's a very talented student from the Etobicoke School of the Arts. And uh, you've certainly accomplished a great deal in your young life and a very good example to young musicians, writers, composers, people who really are interested in uh, getting ahead somewhere and not just being part of the crowd, but standing out from the crowd. So thank you very much, Ben Glossop. Thanks for coming. It was wonderful. I enjoyed the concert. And I'm your host, Asanya Dunn, saying you can do it too. Just work very hard, and you can be a leader of tomorrow, like my guests today. <laughs>